Thank you for your interest in Special Olympics and in joining the thousands of volunteers who dedicate their time and efforts to enriching the lives of Special Olympics athletes. This module will guide you through a general overview of Special Olympics, our history, mission, programs, and the importance of our volunteers. We have a very small staff of people, so all of, all of what we accomplish, we accomplish through other people, volunteers. For volunteers who, who want to be involved, who want to give back, but really to get more than they give, to bring their excitement and to meet some wonderful athletes and their families. The volunteers are amazing. I mean, the, they get to, to watch not only as a spectator, but they get involved, they help they help make events happen. Anyone and everyone can have a role. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter uh, what skills you have. There's lots of opportunities if you're not sure um, to, to come out and be a fan in the stand. It's just so mind-opening and so heartwarming and just so great to be a part of something like that. You just learn from the athletes. You see the joy in their eyes. You see them grow. The interaction with, with all of those folks has just made me a better person. It's made me a better husband, a better son. And I, you know, I don't worry about the small stuff anymore. I've learned that there is so much good in the world and so many people who want to do good things. You're doing it for the athletes, but you get so much more out of it. I suggest volunteering whenever you have the time, whenever you have the possibility. It's just really something great to get into. It opens your mind to the possibilities of, of changing your community and, and making the difference in the lives of these athletes and, and, and yourself. You gain so much from it. The Special Olympics movement includes millions of athletes in over 175 countries around the world. Prior to the 1960s, however, individuals with intellectual disabilities had essentially no access to sports training, athletic competition, or any related programs. In the 1960s, testing of children with intellectual disabilities revealed that they were only half as physically fit as their non-disabled peers. It was assumed that their low fitness levels were a direct result of their disability. A Toronto researcher, Dr. Frank Hayden, questioned this assumption. After conducting extensive research, Dr. Hayden concluded that given the opportunity, people with an intellectual disability could become physically fit and acquire the physical skills necessary to participate in sport. Dr. Hayden's work came to the attention of Eunice Kennedy Shriver and the Kennedy Foundation, which led to the creation of Special Olympics in 1968. The first sports competition organized under the Special Olympics banner was held in 1968 at Soldiers Field in Chicago. Canada was represented at these games with a team led by Harry Red Foster. After years of training, Team Canada joined 2,500 athletes from as many as 100 countries in Idaho to compete in the 2009 Special Olympics World Winter Games. It was a far cry from 1968 when the first World Games were held at Soldier Field in Chicago. Only two countries, Canada and the United States, competed. It was Canada's Dr. Frank Hayden who introduced the concept of Special Olympics, but it was Harry Red Foster who brought the movement to Canada in 1969. Dr. Hayden believed that physical activity would benefit those with an intellectual disability. He shared his ideas with Eunice Kennedy Shriver, and the movement was born. Let me win. But if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. There was obviously some risk, and I was well aware of it. I was the only one in Chicago or anywhere else that knew where that was going. Everybody thought it was a one-off, you know, that it was a nice game and a fun thing to do. And, um, but for me, I always plan for me, this is just the start. So I think it was really important that they were successful uh, because people immediately said, we've got to have this everywhere. And, you know, you can't uh, deny that it wouldn't have gone around the world the way it went around the world. 
without the Kennedy Foundation and, and the Kennedy uh, name and, and the influence behind it. Really what we're providing uh, to our athletes across the world, not just Canada, is an opportunity to live a normal life, to compete, to enjoy the thrill of competition, you know, taking part in something that needs all of the power that you have in your, your body. If you said something that surprised me, that maybe surprised me more than anything at those World Games, I'll tell you, because uh, incredible that a young mother like that would walk into a public place and announce, look, I've got a Down syndrome child, and I'm so proud I'm going to be putting them in the Special Olympics eventually. Boy, that, uh, that just didn't happen. It was the expression of what we put it all together for in the first place, that people didn't feel guilt or shame or anything. In fact, they went out and proudly announced that that was it. It isn't to make and accentuate right, the one. difference, it's to integrate and make them part of family and then part of the community, part of society. The mission of Special Olympics is to provide year-round sports training and athletic competition for individuals with intellectual disabilities. By participating in a variety of Olympic-type sports, children and adults are given continued opportunities to develop physical fitness, participate in sharing of gifts and skills, demonstrate courage, and experience joy. An intellectual disability is characterized by significant limitations in both intellectual functioning and adaptive behavior. Adaptive behavior refers to behaviors that are necessary to live independently and to function safely and appropriately in daily life. These behaviors are comprised of three skill types, social skills, practical skills, and conceptual skills. Practical skills can be defined as the knowledge and competencies required to perform a specific task. Examples include personal care, occupational skills, schedules, and routines. Social skills are those which are required for communication and interaction with others. These include interpersonal skills, social problem solving, and self-esteem. Conceptual skills are defined as those which relate to abstract problem solving and complex thinking. Examples include money and time concepts, language skills, and literacy. In order to be eligible to participate in Special Olympics, the athlete's primary disability must be intellectual, although they may have associated disabilities as well. In addition, the athlete must agree to observe and abide by the Special Olympics Canada policies and sport rules. Special Olympics Canada offers 18 sports, divided into summer and winter sports. To, de to determine which sports exist within your chapter, please consult your chapter-specific information module. Summer sports include swimming, athletics, bocce, soccer, powerlifting, five-pin bowling, basketball, golf, rhythmic gymnastics, softball, and ten-pin bowling. Winter sports include alpine skiing, floor hockey, snowshoeing, speed skating, curling, figure skating, and cross-country skiing. As a person, Narissa is a very positive individual. She challenges herself, regardless of whether she can achieve it or not. She always says, yes, I will try, whether it's in sport, whether it's in life. Special Olympics has given them opportunity and exposure in life beyond that we ever anticipated or ever expected it to be a bit. Now she has developed and she has, uh, she's very intense, she's very committed and trains every week and really enjoys competing at every level. She knows what she wants to do right now and she knows what she wants to achieve and work towards. 
she just persists and pushes herself to, to the best of her ability. It is not only the competing, but it's just the opportunity of meeting so many people. She's developed lifelong friendships. Just come to one of the events and see exactly what goes on. And then you would realize what an amazing experience it is for the athletes, for the families, and for the community. There are many levels of Special Olympics programs, ranging from active start to entry competitive programs to international competition and everything in between. Local programs and competitions occur frequently, and athletes advance through a regular sports cycle competing at provincial or territorial games and moving on to national and world games. National level games are held every two years and alternate between summer and winter. World games are also held every two years, occurring in the years following each national games. Special Olympics competitions are structured so that athletes compete with other athletes of similar ability in equitable divisions, a process called divisioning. The ability of an athlete or team is determined by an entry score from a prior competition, the result of a seeding round, or the result of a preliminary event at the competition itself. Athletes of all ability levels are encouraged to participate, and every athlete is recognized for his or her performance. Long-term athlete development is a framework for developing physical literacy, physical fitness, and competitive ability using a stage-by-stage -stage approach. Many Special Olympics programs are structured around this model and the seven stages of development. As illustrated in the diagram on the left, long-term athlete development begins with active start and progresses in stages to the development of athletes who are active for life. The amount of time participants stay in each of the stages is dependent on where they begin, their needs, and their interests. Individuals may participate in their first Special Olympics program at any age, depending on their first sport exposure and experience. In many cases, individuals will start at stages of active start and fundamentals. At this stage, physical literacy, which is the development of basic motor skills, is the primary area of emphasis. Our Active Start program is a program for our youngest aged athletes, age two to six, and it's a great program. Uh, we work on the fundamental movement skills all through play. So we work on skills such as running, jumping, throwing, uh, through fun games and activities in a one week, uh, one hour session each week. Well, I like how it's really geared for the young kids. and. Uh... You know, it, it works on a lot of uh, developmental things that we're working on with Levi, so it, it just it's a nice fit for us to come here and, and know that uh, there's a program like this that helps, you know, helps us in our development of Levi with uh, these physical challenges. You know, any time that the kids can get more comfortable with their balance and playing with new objects and, and you know, introducing new things to them is always important, so this has a, been a great opportunity to do that. I think it's really important for two reasons. I mean, the first is we're really focusing on the fundamental skills that you need at this age um, to develop in order to be um, an athlete, and also just to figure out what you're interested in and what types of sports might be something that you'd like to pursue in the future of the Special Olympics. It's just amazing that we have the opportunity to get the word out there about how amazing the program is. and. Um, you know, if you're looking for something to get your child involved in, Active Start is where it's at. For both uh, Levi's mother and myself, athletics has been an important part of our life and it's something that we want to continue on with our children. It's given me a lot in my life personally, a lot of friends, discipline, uh, a lot of fun, and it's something that uh, all kids should be involved in at, uh, you know, as early as possible. Our youth athletes, uh, we didn't have any programs for them and we realized that um, they were kind of missing out on getting into the Special Olympics movement and we had an opportunity to 
expose them to Special Olympics and start training them as athletes so that down the road they can um, partake in our high level competition. And so we utilize this opportunity to teach them some sports skills but also have a great time and enjoy themselves as well. We're going to introduce as much as possible to him and I think he'll be the person that tells us what he's interested in and, or what he's not interested in but uh, we hope that it plays a part in his life for sure. My wife has big aspirations. She's convinced that one of us is going to go to the Olympics and I think it's uh, going to be this guy here. Learning to train, training to train, learning to compete, training to compete, and training to win can be considered the middle stages of long-term athlete development. These stages reflect the fact that athletes may choose to move along this continuum in order to optimize their potential. Athletes may also choose to remain at a certain stage or to move into the active for life stage. Well, I think my expectations of Special Olympics were firstly to get Peter involved in the sport. He loves the team. They're, they're, they have this great bond with each other. Um, I did ask him last year, it was funny, what his uh, position was and he said ball hog. Because <laughs> sometimes we have to tell him to pass the ball. He's up at 7 o'clock in the morning. So he has his breakfast, doesn't put on his uniform yet because he's afraid of getting it dirty. <laughs> and then he fills up his water bottle and then he goes up and gets all organized and he you know, gets his basketball shoes on and uh, then we're off. It's not only just basketball, it's a social event and the competition. They're just so happy to compete with each other, or to play with each other and have this whole bond that they've developed over the last five or six years and it's been the best experience of my life. I mean it's part of my family now, it's part of us. You know, Special Olympics has become a big, big part of our lives because Pete now can do what every other kid can do. He's thriving, he's getting exercise. Special Olympics has done such a great job for us as a family. It is expected that there will be a very large number of athletes in the Active for Life stage. There will always be a place in Special Olympics for lifelong participation and for athletes to have fun in sport, be fit, and compete in appropriate ways based on individual goals. Special Olympics would not exist today and could not have been created without the time, energy, commitment, and enthusiasm of volunteers. We rely on volunteers at all levels of the movement to ensure that every athlete is offered a quality sports training and competition experience. Special Olympics welcomes volunteers from a wide range of backgrounds and experience and is supported by more than 17,000 registered volunteers, including thousands of trained coaches. There are many ways to volunteer, including coaching, acting as a board or committee member, fundraising, organizing special events, volunteering at a special event, working at a Healthy Athletes Expo, or managing a sports club. Since the beginnings of Special Olympics in the 1960s, the organization has grown to include millions of athletes around the world. We hope to continue this growth trend and to broaden our reach and include even more athletes, programs, and services. Take a look at where we are headed and how by volunteering you can help us to reach our goal. Sport has the power to transform lives. I remember the days when one my mother was told Loretta will not be able to learn. I remember the days when I was told I would never be able to graduate from high school. I also remember the days when I was told I was worth nothing. But I can remember when I first went to Special Olympics, I was angry. I didn't think I would be worth two cents. But a coach told me, Loretta, you got to stop using your fists and use those feet more. Sport leads to better health, better nutrition, and a sense of belonging. 
Yet people with intellectual disabilities are routinely excluded from sports, so they experience further social isolation and chronic health conditions. At Special Olympics, we provide year-round sports training and athletic competitions for four million athletes with intellectual disabilities. But that's just a drop in the ocean. Even with 53,000 local and regional competitions every year, we reach only 2% of those who need us. How can we reach the world's most hidden population and transform their lives? An online sports academy is one powerful solution, using a massive open online course system capable of bringing educational material to tens of millions of athletes who would otherwise be overlooked, as well as revolutionizing the way that coaches are recruited and trained. A training app is just one of the tools that will benefit athletes, allowing them to train with remote instruction and training plans from their coach. Athletes can now train every day and begin to demonstrate their personal best to themselves and their communities instead of waiting for their next session with their coach. Through the power of an online sports academy, we want to reach 530,000 coaches and 5.3 million athletes by 2015. Now is the opportunity to create a global culture of sports excellence within our movement, maximizing the well-being and athletic potential of every athlete. This is our vision. It's one worth fighting for. Join us.